and it is nothing personal. So I think if we really want to help this country and this house, let us depersonalize the attacks against the Chief Justice, because he's basically doing his work. He's extricated himself and is finished, and that's why Honorable Tiende is calling him a factor official in this matter. The matter has now gone uh, to the president, who will either decide to dissolve parliament or because there is that lapse in the constitution about timelines, he can choose to dilly dally. And if he wanted to help parliament, for instance, he can choose to dilly dally. But Mr. Speaker, one of the things that I want to say is this, that let us be very serious the way we deal with this issue as a parliament. And the reason we want to be serious with it is that we, we will deal legally and the Chief Justice has dealt legally, but there is also politics. And once it has gone to the, to the President, none of us can say with authority that they know how the President is going to deal. He can actually dissolve Parliament. And once he dissolves Parliament, you are home. Personally, I'm not scared and I'm willing to go home and I'm willing to be elected or be thrown out because it's not about me. One thing I am very sure about is that even if I'm not elected, section that I think Honorable Dwale has been referring to because he was saying you need to read, I don't want to recite all the authorities that he's saying about. And there's the by-election that some members have been talking about, and each of them has its own consequences, depending on which one we choose to interpret it by. But Mr. Speaker, if you look at this uh, um, article, it actually talks about an election sui generis, which is neither general nor by election. It would be an election sui generis. And it's not just sui generis for purposes of our own elections, but in the world, because there is no precedent or constitutional precedent from other countries with this provision. It is actually a provision that is very Kenyan. Uh, just like Honorable Botiendo, who sat in the committee, I also have legislative history, and I know why we came up with this. And if we actually go to legislative history, it will show you why we came up with this. And I sat in the Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee in the 10th Parliament as the Vice Chair. And we actually rushed to, to ensure that we pass this because of this article in the Constitution. And the reason we are doing that is because we were concerned about Parliament failing as has been the history in the country, to pass certain laws. Mr. Speaker, let us be sober. I would urge that we come up with a team in this House to look at this matter from a very sober perspective. The only thing I agree with the Honorable Dwale is on the issue of unity of purpose. Not because I fear going back home, but because we need to be sober in the manner that we deal with this issue. It is not a men versus women campaign or fight. It is an issue that is of interest to Kenyans. I know very many male members are telling me, and some have been calling me saying, don't support because you are elected. It's not about me as Milio Diambo. It's about a principle. And that is why, for instance, Mr. Speaker, that we were having this impasse at the Senate about revenue. And revenue was about minorities uh, and minority communities that are feeling let out. It's the same manner and the same challenges that women face, that persons with disabilities face, that youth face. And when we start using this kind of approach, then we'll cut them out forever, Mr. Speaker. Let us be sober. Let us give a working solution. Mr. Speaker, I would want to say the Parliamentary Service Commission, I, I don't have a problem with Parliamentary Service Commission going to court because it's actually the right of the Parliamentary Service Commission. But even as the commission has gone to court, which will may buy us some time, let us also be alive to political realities and find a way out, get a small team from among parliamentarians with the diverse views and seek for a way out. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Of course, um, I needed to hear the Honorable Milio Diambo because um, we have spent some little time trying to argue uh, as to why Article 100 should not have been um, the, the first uh, attempt before you went to the, the very many attempts to amend the Constitution, Articles 97 and 98. Uh, but, but finally, uh, this Parliament, this National Assembly, at least, under the leadership of the Honorable Kioni, uh, did bring uh, the, 
the Nazar legislation. And reading through the report, one can see that there was consultation across board. Many stakeholders were consulted when that bill was being developed. And uh, I think all that we are waiting for is for the Senate to, to deal with the bill. I only hope that the Senate uh, will not uh, put it in the coolers uh, because th 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 we, need, we need to have movement. That bill addresses the issue of uh, representation of women, youth, persons with disabilities, minorities, and marginalized. So, we can't, we, so in that respect, and that bill was supposed to be enacted within a period of five years. And I've said it several years. That, that, that's the one law that really should not have taken that long. But the Honorable Emilio Diambo and, and many others of our colleagues would know that we have had arguments about uh, whether that is the route to go or we should go the route of uh, amending the Constitution, Article 97 and 98. The Honorable Kinani wanted to weigh uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I agree with those who have said that they, we need to have unity of purpose. Mr. Speaker, this issue of gender equity has been around since time immemorial. Mr. Speaker, when the CJ of the Republic of Kenya issued that edit, whether it was administrative, whether it was judicial, I do not know. In my mind, what came first to my mind is what happened to this very important principle called national interest. Mr. Speaker, there are certain things that cannot be documented. There are certain things that cannot be written. But in any country, in any civilized country, national interest outweighs any other interest, whether written or unwritten, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we have had just one by-election then in, in one constituency called Mr. Mbweni. Even the body that is tasked with conducting elections realized that under the circumstances, under the COVID crisis, under this pandemic, holding one special election was difficult. And here somebody comes and says, go back for a general election, because literally what this means is a general election. Mr. Speaker, I've, I've had in many other jurisdictions that there used to be something called judicial gerrymandering. The reason why I say this, Mr. Speaker, is ideally the other two arms of government are supposed to be offshoots of parliament. And that is what the premise of, of the current constitution and article one uh, under Article 1 had in mind. Mr. Speaker, what I see, even the framers of the current constitution do not want to take an explicit position on the issue of gender equity. You realize, even the, uh, under the current constitution, it's like they never wanted to take a position. This issue was referred to the judiciary. They never wanted to take a position. And yet they expected parliament, which is a product of one man, one vote, to come up with a formula that none of them, whether in the civil society, whether in the judiciary, fail to take a position. And Mr. Speaker, where I therefore, what this means is that the failures, the individuals or the groups who have failed in the other two arms of government want to reduce parliament to a punching bag. And Mr. Speaker, this is one thing that we should not accept. This is politics. This is politics. This is politicizing the institution of parliament. And Mr. Speaker, I want to stand here and say what you did yesterday was the right thing. And even all the other lawyers with sober minds, with all other lawyers, including Grand Mula, who have expanded their horizon of thinking outside the petty politics of their sectarian interests, Mr. Speaker, have supported your position. And that is the position today we as the PAC. We as the PAC today had a crisis meeting under the leadership of the Speaker and resolved on your behalf to challenge this thing in all the courts possible. And that is the task, and that is the mandate of the PAC. It's not something that we want to do out of the blue, but it's something that has really Really, something that we really feel that must be done, because how do you do the? How do you just come up one morning, without giving notice to the Speaker of the National Assembly, without giving notice to the Speaker of the Senate, and you just say you have advised the President? I do know the President is also the head of a civilized nation called Kenya. There's a national interest. The Speaker, I'm told, when you want to become celebrated and uh, you want to be honoured by the international players, in particular the international actors, in the name of, 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 of NGOs, you must do something so radical that you become sensationally you know, covered in the newspapers. And I think this is one thing. So I don't want to discuss the details or the substance of, or the content of uh, what the CJ did. But honestly, if you dissect it, isn't it meant to trigger something else outside the retirement? 
the Bernie retirement, and that is the essence. And therefore, Parliament will use this in special to use as a punchy bag. Please, I want to beg you. It is not about your electability. It is not about whether you will be re-elected or not. It's about this principle of Parliament being used as a punching bag. I was there in the 10th Parliament. I was there in the 11th Parliament. I am here in the 12th Parliament. Well, how come it failed the attention of all those who are there to sort out this? Why will you attribute it to Parliament? Why do you want to negate the very principle of free and fair election if the people of Eldas decide to have a lady as their representative, they will have it. If they have decided to have Aaron Kainan as a representative, then that should not be impaired at the as the speaker. And this is why I'm saying, for the sake of this institution, and I know we will not be the last parliament, we are not the first parliament. Our Honorable Dali has actually alluded to this. In the 10th parliament, they tried. Mother Karua was one of the best gender activists, I will say this, equivalent to Mwili. She did, she was a minister for justice. She had an opportunity to fix that thing. Actually, the circumstances at that particular time were easier. They didn't do it. They left it to parliament. It came to 11th parliament, it didn't happen. It came to 12th parliament, it's not happened. Somebody wants to spoil our image. This is one thing that we must reject. Finally, Mr. Speaker, when a crisis like this, the whole world is, is right now affected by the, the COVID crisis. Where will the money to conduct a general election come from? Because we all know where we are right now. And Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, this is not a matter for so and so. Please, let's debate it soberly. Let's approach it soberly so that as a house, we address this issue with our open mind. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, it is very, very disturbing. I want to quote Mr. Speaker what Martin Luther King Jr. said, that the ultimate measure of leadership, Mr. Speaker, is not, is not where one stands in terms of comfort, Mr. Speaker, but where one stands in terms of controversy and challenge like now, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I was very affected and perplexed by the ill advice, premature advice from the Chief Justice. Mr. Speaker, why do I say so? We are aware, Mr. Speaker, on this matter of truth agenda. 2017, there was a, an order that was given by Justice Motivo, Mr. Speaker. And the Chief Justice knows in two weeks' time, there is going to be a hearing to determine whether that order is applicable in the, was applicable in the 11th Parliament or in this 12th Parliament. What was the hurry for? That's why, Mr. Speaker, I'm saying it was a challenge. Is it because he's about to retire in three months' time, Mr. Speaker? Is it because he wants to go down in Parliament? He wants to go down with, uh, with BBI, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, even the Supreme Court itself, those judges, they do not subscribe to the truth that gender rule. And you know that, Mr. Speaker. In the Cabinet itself, there's no truth that gender rule, Mr. Speaker. This Parliament has worked extra hard, Mr. Speaker, to achieve this. And the many legislators who are shouting outside there, particularly our female colleagues, they should stop pretending, Mr. Speaker. We've been in this parliament, and the time of voting when it was here, they were away in New York to gain allowances, Mr. Speaker, as opposed to advancing this. It is really shameful, Mr. Speaker, for those of you, if you push me, I'll mention your names. Because the two-thirds was not achieved because of their selfish interests. This is the time, Mr. Speaker, we want to debate this matter soberly. Some of you who have just come in 12th Parliament, you were not there in the 11th Parliament. And Honorable Bawanga was one of the leaders who went to New York at that time, Mr. Speaker. And he's been all ahead shouting all over. And we can go and check even the internet of the flight. She could not stay here now, because now, of this matter. Now, 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 Mr. Now, Speaker. Now that you have mentioned, you have mentioned uh, Honorable Bawanga. She was among them who went to New York at that time. Mr. Speaker, I have been here in the 11th Parliament and the 12th Parliament. I have been in this house when Duale 1, Duale 2, Duale 3, and Duale 4 were shot down. I was in this house. And I want to challenge the Honorable Member for Kiminini that he either withdraws his assertion that I was in New York, and to New York I have been, 
but I have never been in New York at a time when this house is voting on a critical matter as the two third gender principle. I have been here every, every time. So Mr. Speaker, I want to urge you, for the sake of my good name, that Honorable Chris Wamalwa either substantiates what he is saying or withdraws that statement. Mr. Speaker, this matter is a matter for all of us. Mr. Speaker, it is for all of us to resolve it together. Mr. Speaker, we will not get to the bottom of it by attacking each other and badmouthing each other and trying to put each other down. We will only resolve this matter with the unity of purpose that the Honorable Adam Duale mentioned. So, Mr. Speaker, I would urge you to ask members, even as we debate, to try not to drag each other down because it is not by pulling each other down that we will find a solution to this very important matter. We have our views on it. It may be different from what the Honorable Wamalua has, but Mr. Speaker, as you have said, you may not agree with what I say, but you will defend unto your death, Mr. Speaker, as I know you, my right to say it as an elected member of this house, Mr. Speaker. So even if we don't agree, let us not bring each other down because we all, Chris, you and I need to be somewhere after Nini. Sasa unaleta Nini? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable uh, Amalwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Honorable Amalwa, please. Earlier, uh, uh, member, please. It is let, true. Let's not, let's, not, um, let's not try to, to spoil the names of uh, one another. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a house of records. And if you allow me, I can go to the hands of Mr. Speaker and prove Honorable Wanga wrong. Because I was here and I support the two-third gender, Mr. Speaker. And that's why I was so keen. So you cannot go in the media, Mr. Speaker, shouting loudest. And yet you've contributed to the unsuccessful pa passage of this bill, Mr. Speaker. That time, if you allow me, I can go to the handset and prove it, Mr. Speaker. As I move on, Mr. Speaker. No, no, no on, on, Honorable Amalwa, it's not, it, 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 it's not personal. M Mr. Speaker, as we move forward, as we move forward, Mr. Speaker, as we've said, this is about uh, unity for purpose, Mr. Speaker. I cannot withdraw. I'll go to the handset and some such shit, Mr. You know, Speaker. You know, Honorable Amalwa, Honorable Amalwa, if you insist on um, that record, then you, you'll have to... Mr. Go, Speaker, under our standing orders... Go down. Yeah, you know, you, you, know you, you, you are responsible for the accuracy of what you say. Yes. Yeah. So if you have the if you have that answer, please just make, table it. Mr. Speaker, if you allow me, within our standing orders is allowed, I can substantiate by going to check our standing orders, particularly at that particular time when that matter was live on the floor of the house. I can substantiate that, Mr. Speaker, you give me time. Okay, by you We'll we'll discuss when we come to that time. Please allow me to go look Honor, at the answer. Honorable Amalwa. Honorable Amalwa. Do you have do you have that record? Do you have that record? The answer is there, Mr. Speaker. No, no, no. Please. Uh, I if don't you allow me, I'll go to the answer. I don't have the answer at the moment as I speak. So you stand by your statement? Yes, Mr. Speaker. And uh, you you now you would have to you would have to, to stop there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you've been challenged. Been. Because you've been challenged. We will give you the time to go and look for that answer. And if you don't, you will, you, 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 oh, other consequences will follow. Yeah? Honorable Amalwa, you would have to stop at that point so that you go and look for that record, which you say. Because not, you, know, it's, it's, it, it, you know, we can't just tell you, let you say the answer, the answer bears me out. We've, had, we've seen occasions where members have said this and hands will bear me out. When it is checked, it doesn't bear you out. So until such time as you, pre, you, you bring a, a copy of that uh, hands hand, you'd have to... Uh, Mr. Speaker. The, the option available is uh, you either withdraw. 
what, 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 what's the issue? What, what's Mr. the issue Speaker, that, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I brought an amendment of a bill to change the election debt, which required, which had required that uh, super majority. And I remember that time, Mr. Speaker, because I was standing out as allowance. Why don't you give me time? I'll go to the answer, Mr. Speaker. Now so you are talking about a different bill. They came at a similar time, Mr. Speaker, no. and the requirement was similar. No, election date, election date, and two thousand gender rule is, are, are different. Mr. Speaker, this is a house of records. No. I know, Honorable no. Wanga, we are supposed to go meet somewhere. God willing. We don't know who will go through. No, but if I told her I want to substantiate, why should you force me to withdraw? I was standing orders allow that. Then go and get the records. Absolutely. I'll go and get the records, and I'm ready for consequences. Okay, please. Go, go bring the records. We don't want our colleagues to be pretending, and yet they've contributed to the failure of of passage of this bill on this floor of the House, Mr. Speaker. Please Mr. Go. Speaker, as we move forward. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, because you don't have the you don't have that record, and you insist insist on it, you'll have to stop there, go and get the record, bring it here tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Honorable Kioni. Honorable Kioni. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I, for the opportunity to contribute to this. I have nothing personal against the Chief Justice, Mr. Speaker. So, Honorable Amalwa, Thursday afternoon, 24th. But, Mr. Speaker, I have the advisory opinion from the CJ, and some of the words that he has used in the statement. Uh, indicate different because, Mr. Speaker, one of the paragraphs, I think paragraph 24, the CJ seems to accuse us for having been carelessly lazy. Carelessly lazy attitude. That is not uh, as a, a word you'd use if you don't have anything specific against this institution. Mr. Speaker, again on, on paragraph 26, the CJ again says that Kenyans desire to incentivize, incentivize the political elites. And Mr. Speaker, again, you can actually see something a little personal against the institution of parliament because if we have to be taught something as the political elites, uh, I think it is going beyond the, the, the advice that uh, we have been talking about. Again, Mr. Speaker, uh, paragraph 27, I think he has uh, Sankok. Just take a walk, man. Honorable, Honorable Sankok, you don't walk like, you don't do it here. You are moving all over. You are not dealing with wildlife. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this uh, advisory opinion by the CJ has even a typo error. I think uh, it is supposed to have 28 paragraphs. Uh, he seems to have repeated paragraph 26 twice. Uh, on the second, I think it should be uh, paragraph 27. Again, he has said that uh, we must be held accountable as members of parliament, meaning that, um, and he, then he goes ahead to say that uh, we must put, or we must say no to impunity. I mean, the, the choice of those words from paragraph 24 all the way to paragraph 28, Mr. Speaker, seems to indicate to me that uh, uh, the CJ or the judiciary has kind of uh, taken an attitude towards us. And I believe that uh, even as we think of how to resolve this issue, it is important that uh, the judiciary also pays attention to this third arm of government, and they need to treat us with the respect that we deserve. To say that we have been carelessly lazy as members of parliament, it's not a kind word to use on people who have been elected. To say that uh, we must say no to impunity, this house is not a house of impunity. It is actually, we have said it over and over again, is a house of records. To say that we must be held accountable, it is the thing we do every day. So I, I, I see an attitude 
from the, the Chief Justice that is not really helpful in resolving this issue. Um, and it is, I don't want to go through all the words, but there is, you can actually see even the way that he, the advisory opinion goes to address our speaker, you can actually see that uh, there is something that, uh, it's like there is something to grind, and I agree with uh, Mwachimwa Kenan, that we may have to look at these things more politically than uh, otherwise. Mr. Speaker, let me say this on the onset as the, and the chairman of CIOC. We will soon be calling the Chief Justice, I hope before he retires, to come before the committee because the judiciary has failed to implement the constitution and specifically the two that get a rule. We want him to account to parliament. Why is it that within judiciary, they have also failed to account on the two that get a rule? And that, that is the work. That is the work of the CIOC. We will also be summoning the executive because the committee has been given that mandate by the constitution to ensure that every institution, including the office of the Chief Justice, uh, has implemented the two that gender rule. So, Mr. Speaker, I say this so that uh, we can get it clearly as Kenyans, or Kenyans can get it clearly, that it is not parliament. It's not just parliament. And narrowing this issue, and I, I would really want to ask many of us, narrowing this issue of the two that gender rule to just within parliament is a very, uh, you are looking at it in a very um, charu manner. I would want us to look at it globally, because that was the, the intention of the Constitution. And if you go through the laws that were passed during 10th Parliament and 11th Parliament, as, pro, as required at the fifth schedule, you will see that, uh, Mr. Speaker, many of those acts of Parliament, and I thought uh, those who would care would actually have commended Parliament. I haven't seen a par 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 parliamentarian who have passed so many laws within such a short while. 10th and 11th Parliament did a commendable job but nobody has ever been out there to say that um, we helped in a big way in implementing. Certainly, we have some other areas to do, but I want to say this, Mr. Speaker, that if you read the laws, uh, the acts, many acts that were passed by 10th and 11th Parliament, they all mention specific, they have specific clauses within the acts that require that we operationalize or we achieve the two that gender rule. So in my opinion, there is no one specific act or parliament that is required for us to pass so that we can uh, operationalize or bring to fo uh, fruition the issue of to that gender rule. Mr. Speaker. women as senators. Would we be curing the, the issue? So, Madam Speaker, this is a matter that requires sobriety. It's not a matter that, you know, want us to use force because you cannot force Kenyans. Madam Speaker, this almost looks like when you're playing soccer and then all of a sudden you decide to return the ball back to the goalkeeper but accidentally you send it to the striker who now controls it. What has happened in this country is that we have been doing so well in terms of democracy. We have been growing as a young democracy, freedom of speech, you know, but the action by the Chief Justice, Madam Speaker, now really takes back all that power and gives the power to the President so that the President can decide. Madam Speaker, I've looked at the Constitution again it talks about the election of the president and the members of the parli of parliament the same day. So what does this advisory by the chief justice mean? Does it mean that now once this is dissolved or parliament is dissolved, then the president also goes home? I mean, it is COVID time. Do we have money to be able to uh, run an election? you know, like a mini general election or actually a, a general election and then come back to the issue of BBI. I think we need to be realistic because not everything is cast on stone. I think we will gain a lot more if we consult 
instead of taking a loan ranger approach. This loan ranger approach, uh, Madam Speaker, has taught even some of us that it doesn't, it doesn't help. We've got to consult here. Whenever a member brings a bill here, they need to sit down and discuss, you know, build consensus. Madam Speaker, there are things which really shocks me. As a member of this Senate, I have two bills which I've introduced in this House. They went to the National Assembly and they were declared money bills. So if you're blaming, you know, uh, both houses for maybe actions of one house, then what are we going to do in this country? Are we going to just create things? So Madam Speaker, as I wind up, I just want to reiterate two things and actually um, ask a very key question. Can the legislation contemplated under Article 100 be enacted without amending the ceiling of numbers of MPs as provided by the Constitution? And the answer, most people will say, you go back to the Constitution. Because we now say, let us change. Instead of 290, let us do what? Let us change the, the way parliament works. We will, be, we will be limited to the provisions of Article 255 of the Constitution that requires a referendum. So any action that we take, Madam Speaker, in order to be able to build this country as a democracy, we must look at the entire law. We must agree or admit to mistakes that we made so that moving forward, we can be able to correct them. Madam Speaker, as I wind up uh, and request Senator Mutula Lonzo Jr. to second, I just want to encourage all of us to read the Constitution and correct it very soon with a referendum. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the letter by the Chief Justice uh, raises serious constitutional issues which we ideally must debate and discuss uh, with the sobriety it deserves. Madam Speaker, under Article 102, the term of Parliament is defined as the term of each House of Parliament the term of each House of Parliament expires on the date of the next general elections. Mr. Speak Madam Speaker, this clause alone suggests that there is a contradiction or an apparent conflict between Article 102 and Article 261. The second issue, Madam Speaker, that it raises serious concern is that it is contemplated under the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court Article 2, uh, uh, and, uh, that an appeal can be raised on any matter on interpretation of the Constitution. The reason why the drafters of this Constitution, and I participated in the research on the Supreme Court and its jurisdiction, is that we contemplated that the Supreme Court would have powers and jurisdiction to determine such critical issues as this one. Why do I raise this issue? Madam Speaker, I'm raising this issue because the President of the Supreme Court is the Chief Justice. And therefore, in exercise of his jurisdiction, under Article 261, the Chief Justice should have exercised extreme caution because of the possibility that an appeal would be raised uh, to the Supreme Court on the interpretation of the exercise of jurisdiction under Article 261 uh, five, six, and seven. Thirdly, it is also a contradiction, Madam Speaker, that the Chief Justice is given what appears to be a, an administrative role under Article 261 to transmit a decision under Article 261.7 to the President to dissolve uh, Parliament. Madam Speaker, this article, the transitional part of the Constitution under Chapter 18, will require also, Madam Speaker, in my view, a deliberate um, interpretation. What bothers me, and I, I've said this before, that for the President to take action 
And I, I slightly disagree with the notion that the word shall has got two meanings. The word shall is mandatory. However, in the exercise of, of jurisdiction by the president under Article 261.7, I am not persuaded that the president does not have a jurisdiction quasi-judicial to check whether the process under Article 261 has been followed. Madam Speaker, we want to tell uh, His Excellency at the time he's exercising this jurisdiction, and we hope the Attorney General, who is mentioned in Article 261.6b, that the order directing Parliament and the Attorney General to take steps to ensure that the required legislation is enacted, Madam Speaker, this part of the Constitution was not complied with. It is, Madam Speaker, an issue of constitutional concern whether, and in my view, I submit humbly that the President cannot exercise jurisdiction under Article 261.7 if Article 261.6b has not been complied with. Is there time out? Honorable Senators, this is a statement and uh, <laughs> standing order 34. Every member except the mover uses only a maximum of five, five minutes. minutes. So, so you have your two minutes. Oh, the I bell, still have the, your one minute. The bell is showing you one minute. Therefore, Madam Speaker, the mandatory terms under Article 261.7 for the President to exercise jurisdiction, this, the President must check that an order was transmitted to Parliament. We want the President to check in the communication by the Chief Justice that an order was directed to Parliament and Attorney General and served on the Speaker of the National Assembly and Senate in order for 261.7 to apply. And lastly, Madam Speaker, in terms of practical terms, the Constitution under Article 260 says this Constitution is supposed to breathe life into it. Madam Speaker, it's supposed to be interpreted in such a way that it is not a contradiction. You dissolve parliament today, go an election in 90 days, chances are that we will, we, there will be further default if those mechanisms that are contemplated in this constitution are not put in before that dissolution. And therefore, it is my view that the Chief Justice act, acted prematurely, in a hurry, and without uh, ensuring that certain minimal things were done. It, it, it almost appears of the, as if the Chief Justice has become an activist where he's supposed to be a president and where he's supposed to be the chief, uh, the chief presiding judge of the highest court of the land, I support. Uh, Honorable Senators, I now propose the question that the Senate do now adjourn to discuss a definite matter of urgent national importance, namely the advice by the Chief Justice to have the president dissolve Parliament passed one to Article 2617 of the Constitution. Honorable Senators, a good number. I see the list is very long. Uh, and again, may I repeat that this is under starting order number 34. So you only have a maximum of five minutes. Uh, may I request Senator Manga, if she was, she's not under intervention, to actually switch off that and and move to the right request because you are, you are, yes, you are in the wrong place. Uh, Senator Obusia, Senior Senator Amos Switzwila Waku. Thank you, Madam, for giving me this opportunity to speak on a matter which is raising very fundamental, complex constitutional issues. Because of time, only five minutes, I'll try to be very brief. The structure of this constitution is that we removed from the president the powers to prorogue and dissolve parliament. And therefore, the terms of parliament are clearly set out in the constitution, very much like the American Constitution, uh, which and we state that under Article 101, general elections will be held on 
the second Tuesday in August of every fifth year. And therefore, the, defini the definition of general election is not anywhere else in the Constitution, apart from what we now read here, should be held every fifth year. And that was deliberate because of the former Constitution, which gave the President all the powers to, to dissolve Parliament and so on. Mr. Speaker, sir, I agree with Montula Kilonza Jr. when he said that there is a basic contradiction because that's under Article 101. Under Article 102, the term of each House of Parliament expires on the date of the next general election. And 101 has said general elections will only be held on the second Tuesday in August of every year. Consequently, we, there's a contradiction between that and the powers being exercised by the President uh, under Article 2617. Because under Article 2617, it has not been provided whether the election to be called is a general election or not. And if it is not, they would have had further amendments, Mr. Madam Speaker, on the effect of that on the sitting members. It, it, does the term expire? And if it, has, it will be less than five years, what happens? And uh, what happens in, 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 the, in those circumstances? Do they still continue and serve for the balance of the term, which is two years, but did they say new, new parliament and so on? So there is a very fundamental contradiction there. And in fact, it's a, such a fundamental contradiction that the president cannot just act on it before the loopholes that have been identified on this matter have been, uh, uh, have been rectified. Madam Speaker, I was, I was, we were aware of Article 2617, but it applies to for the fourth schedule, which consists of many, many legislations to be enacted and the period within which those elections must be enacted. Most of those legislations will not, will not cause a fundamental problem. But where a decision to dissolve is going to affect other provisions of the Constitution which relate to election, then I submit, Mr. Speak, uh, Madam Speaker, that those con contradictions must first of all be ironed out completely and clearly stated before the parliament can be dissolved. And Madam Speaker, the correct place to iron up these differences will be in a referendum. Referendum why? Because the sovereignty of the people of Kenya is vested in the people. And the parliament, the judiciary is acting on behalf of the people. The president is acting on behalf of the people. We are acting on behalf of the people. We are now telling the people that there's a very fundamental close contradictions in the Constitution, very fundamental loopholes within the Constitution which require to be closed up. And can the people decide on that matter? And therefore, before the President can really give assent, I hope you can be advised that don't give it until these constitutional fundamental constitutional principles have been, have, have, have been closed completely. Madam Speaker, I wanted also to mention that uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, emeritus, we give you one minute to wind up. Okay. I've mentioned everything. It's okay. Thank you very much for respecting that. Senator Haji Faria Ali. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. First of all, I want to be on record, and I wish to thank C.J. Maraga for the decision he took, Madam Speaker. If it will take all of us going back to election for, uh, for, 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 for gender rule uh, to be realized, so be it, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I believe that gender equity is a human rights issue. And therefore, 
elected leaders should, uh, should take care of that right, Madam Speaker. I also believe that if 50% of your brain is not on the decision-making table, Madam Speaker, yes, 50% of your brain, because uh, women for are 51% of this country, and their brain and their ideas is not on the table, Madam Speaker. That, therefore, Madam Speaker, that is why we make all the blunders we make politically, and that is why we will never develop economically or socially because 50% of the brains are not in the, on the table, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Senator Mutula and I sponsored a bill on uh, to third gender uh, rule, Madam Speaker. And uh, around, and this bill was debated, or before it even came to a debate, Madam Speaker, the, the chair of JLAC was on record that this, you know, uh, bill should be thrown out of the window. Madam Speaker, I think the women of, of Nandi should start collecting signatures. <laughs> the former chair. <laughs> <laughs> to impeach Senator Cheryl Gay for, for violating their rights. And then, but I thank the, the current chair because now the bill has now advanced, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker. What's, what's your point of order, Senator I hope you'll, give, you'll keep my time, Madam Speaker. Uh, with all due respect to my sister uh, and Deputy Majority Whip, is it in order to say that the position I took was as the chair of JLAC and as a former chair of JLAC and as a senator of Nandi. I thought I was just communicating the decision of the committee, looking at the standing orders that the chairperson of that specific committee will be the spokesperson of that committee. So you should not hang me on, on the and Senator Mutula Kilonso Jr. is a member of that committee. I was just communicating. So I wish... Uh, S S Senator Faria would re restrict herself only, S Madam Speaker, on saying the communication from the committee of JLAC, not Gerarge per se. Thank you, Chair. Noted. Thank you, Senator Faria. Please finish two and a half minutes. Uh, 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 thank you, Madam Chair. And I think uh, if, if the ruling that was made by, uh, by Justice uh, uh, C.J. Maraga was on any other constitutionality other than the gender rule, Madam Speaker. Most of us would have been respecting that rule. And uh, as Senator, Senator Afshiro had mentioned, most of the bills that would, were going to make the House to be dissolved for, for non-passage have already been complied with, Madam Speaker, except the, bill, the gender uh, rule one, Madam Speaker. And, and therefore, Madam Speaker, that shows that there is a, 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 a problem in terms of our understanding. Mr. Speaker, Madam Speaker, sorry, 51% uh, of this country are not adequately represented in both houses, Madam Speaker. At least Senate, we are just minus one. But the other house, the percentage is, uh, they are around 23%, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, I think as houses who, who, are, who are creation of the Constitution, I think it is incumbent upon us to ensure that we respect and protect the Constitution, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the bill that is sponsored by uh, Senator Mutula and I is about, Madam Speaker, just filling in the gap. It's not like it's going to create, you know, uh, uh, Kenyans are made to feel like it is going to bring another 290 uh, seats back to the House. That is far, far from the truth, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, gender rule, I want people to know, is not about women. Gender rule is about both, both, uh, bo uh, both genders, Madam Speaker. And therefore... Uh, point of order from Senator Sakaja. Madam Speaker, our starting orders are clear on uh, the issue of relevance. The motion by, that we're discussing is not about the merits or demerits of having two-thirds. It is about the actions um, taken by, by the court. Would I be in order to say that this discussion is not on the relevance of the motion? Because we have a lot of thoughts and we support two-thirds, but we're discussing the action of the Chief Justice 
in uh, asking for the advising for the dismissal for the, for the dissolution of parliament well, could you guide because i know many other members are also going to contribute but we're not discussing agenda bill today madam speaker um, thank you yes senator sakaja although in practice when you are given your five minutes you will have the right to also talk to your constituency this is the practice we have had you have only 40 minutes, Senator Faria. 40 seconds, sorry, 40 seconds. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, am, I, I, I think this is still relevant because it, the, 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 uh, the CJ took this action as a result of the gender bill not being passed. And therefore, that is what I'm discussing in terms of its relevance to the, what we are discussing now, Madam Speaker. Ma Madam Speaker, uh, uh, therefore, Madam Speaker, let us look at how we can balance. Madam Speaker, there are a lot of things that are against women in terms of the elective position, Madam Speaker. They face a lot of challenges in, the, in this country in terms of election violence, in terms of uh, parties not giving them nomination, there are so many impediments, Madam Speaker, not only for the, gender, uh, for the gender, but also disadvantaged groups like the youth and people with disability, Madam Speaker. And therefore, Madam Speaker. Time up, Senator. Uh, Senator Mbogo, George Ochila Ayako. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to make uh, remarks uh, regarding this uh, very serious matter of national importance. Madam Speaker, uh, the Speaker, oh, sorry, uh, Madam Speaker, the Chief Justice uh, did something that uh, to me may appear to be a desire to be trending in social media and in news. But a responsible person would not do this. The Chief Justice is a holder of an office that uh, must not uh, advise or make advice that is pedantic, advice that cannot be implemented, advice that uh, uh, has the potential of causing chaos. And the Chief Justice uh, says that uh, we must rise to the pain of making difficult decisions. I don't think that uh, we should uh, be excited about making difficult uh, decisions. We should be excited about resolving the consequences of our decisions. If you look at why we are here, where we are standing, it's not because of legislation. It's because of Kenyans who vote. In, 20, in 2007, uh, before the enactment of the Constitution, Kenyans have been voting like that. In 20, uh, 12 or 2013, when they went to polls, they voted like that in 2017. So the Chief Justice or somebody says, go back to polls. Have Kenyans changed? If the reasons and the pattern uh, by which they vote have not changed, they are likely to return the same thing. So what needs to happen is uh, perhaps uh, the presidency to look at the situation and look at this as a moment that calls for reform. Asking parliament to go home, when we come back, and I'm likely to come back, I'll be the same with Chilo. And uh, Faria, my uh, colleague, will be the same Faria. What will have changed? So basically, we need to have those laws so that when we go for elections, and that election will be in 2022, not now, then we will have a situation that will deal with this. So going for an election because the Chief Justice in his uh, uh, proximity to retirement has made uh, something that is trending, will not solve this. This will be solved uh, if we are allowed to continue and try to negotiate and resolve this in the same manner that uh, my cousin, uh, Senator Moses Wetangula, and my nephew, uh, Senator Sakaja, resolved the formula issue. We can't just go home and expect uh, a magic to happen that uh, uh, the legislators who may come after us will solve it. So we need to solve it now, and we need to have time, because we'll not change. Mm. 
That is why sending home this team to bring another team that will be constituted in terms of atoms and molecules the same way will not yield the results. So the Chief Justice must seriously think about offering solutions, not uh, making a decision that trends. Madam Speaker, as I conclude, just look at uh, what the law says. And uh, I agree with Senator Mutula Kilonzo that this constitution and Senator Wako has contradictions. If you look at uh, Article 81, it says, uh, the electoral system shall comply with the following principles. And the first one, which is A, uh, freedom of citizens to exercise their political rights under Article 38. Then the one that is problematic is B. You can see the ranking. Uh, not more than two thirds. That is the one that is following the first one, which is the first one. So let's go to Article 38, Madam Speaker. And when we go to Article 38 eh, uh, of the Constitution, and uh, just allow me, I don't see very well to get there. If you look at 38 uh, C, 38 C3, let me just go there. And yeah, 38, 1, 3, every adult citizen has the right without unreasonable restriction. And you go to C, to be a candidate for public office or office within a political party of which the citizen is a member and if elected to hold that office. So if the first right is under uh, political rights under Article 38, uh, 81, uh, the one, the one A. Unfortunately, your time is up. The list is very long. Senator Mwaura Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm very Mama. excited. Oh, I don't know why. I think it is just the madam. <laughs> madam, I beg, I beg your pardon. I'm very excited, Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker. When I hear my fellow nominated senators talking about discrimination. Uh, led by Senator Omanga, because when I started making those statements, immediately they came here. They looked like I was a man from Mars. But uh, that is a problem of having a constitution that creates sinecure positions uh, that uh, do not necessarily hold uh, the, the, the gravitas that uh, they are supposed to uh, you know, uh, resort to. Because even this Senate, Madam Speaker, we vote by delegation. And so when you are a senator for people with disabilities, a man and a woman, I think there's equality of gender there, you are relegated to your home county and your pigeonhole there. That is a contradiction. I think I had senior, uh, you know, uh, Attorney General Emeritus talking about the contradiction in this constitution. And what is envisaged uh, is that even when there's balance of power, yeah, checks and balances, it is not a, a basis for anarchy. And I really want to agree with uh, Senator uh, Ombogo Ochilo Ayako that uh, we, we, we have an activist uh, Chief Justice who wants to go down the annals of history as having made two key rulings that really made the country to even go to the edge of the precipice. Because, um, but, but then the problem of this is that you, then you suffer from historical revisionism because people will also look what was the motivation of your action. It will not just because you did it. You will be mentioned, but then people may dismiss your legacy by saying it was not well thought out. And uh, Madam Speaker, this is the case because if you look at the chronology of events, two things stand out. Number one is that there was a case or cases at the High Court, maybe they were consolidated, I stand guided, and the Supreme Court, uh, the, the High Court, uh, after its ruling by Mativo, the appeal was dismissed. So what was supposed to follow? Uh, it appears that the Chief Justice was moved by the six petitioners. Did they, did they petition the High Court? That needs to be clear, or the Supreme Court. And in that regard, therefore, when you go and declare that a court order is as good as served because the parties are present when it was being issued, what kind of uh, jurisprudence are you establishing there, really? It, that, it therefore means that then you go and, and, and get the, 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 the Hansard or whatever records of, of the court proceedings and use them as court order? What then therefore constitutes a court order? So I think, I, think, I think one of the things that comes out clearly here is that you cannot look at the law in its purest of forms 
and say that it only exists by the itself. Because legislation is positive law, as Hayek speaks about in terms of the rule of law. But the Chinese have actually moved ahead and argued that rule of law is not enough. They talk about self-discipline. Recently now they moved from self-discipline to self-purification. I think Justice Maraga should have self-purified. By, th by, by, by looking at this issue and saying that if you are to dissolve parliament, Madam Speaker, then you, you, you must look at the effect of that dissolution. Because one of the things that it does is that it separates elections. So the six elections that happen, happen in a day, in terms of a general election, then they will be staggered. Maybe it may be good for IABC, but what is the import of that in terms of our governance? And further to it, this is a monumental question that has not been responded to. Is it actually true that parliament failed to pass a law? And my answer is no, because there are not less than three attempts to, uh, to ensure the, 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 uh, the uh, provisions of Article 801, uh, B and C and Article 100 have come into effect. Even myself, I did propose when we were passing the security amendment laws to delineate the 12 nomination seats in the National Assembly as to occasion six of them to be men and six of them to be women for the, uh, people with disabilities and all of that. We were just trying to fill these uh, provisions of the Constitution to breathe life into it. And so going further, the question would be, does it mean that a, 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 what would be the best option of ensuring the promotion of representation of women or people with disabilities? Is it by facilitation so that they go fast past the post? Or then do we resort as a country to go the proportional representation way so that you have the party list? These are very fundamental questions that we need to talk about. Time up. Senator Wetangula Moses Masiga. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I feel sometimes very worried when I see a, a holder of an office like the Chief Justice taking this nihilist approach to issues. Madam Speaker, the President should be advised that before he even considers the advice he has been given, he must seek the highest legal advice from other quarters. Because the Chief Justice has definitely acted, in my view, in a manner that is uh, not reasonable. One, Madam Speaker, the advice of the Chief Justice must have been born out of the process contemplated under Article 2616 that Mutula Kilonzo talked about. There is no reference to it at all, at all. And we will respect the Chief Justice, Madam Speaker, as lawyers, if he had given a judgment in court. Lawyers, we say, we don't agree with you, but we respect it, because you're acting as a judicial officer. This one is quasi-judicial. He's offering an advice without any regard to process that is envisaged in the Constitution itself. In the president looking at this, Madam Speaker, he must consider the following. One, that under the same constitution, Article 27.3, there is an outlaw of freedom of, of discrimination. People elect who they want. Number two, Madam Speaker, that once people are elected to parliament, you cannot walk into this chamber and condition the senator for McQueen to vote in a particular manner. Every member has a right to vote. That is in Articles Part, sorry, part 5, 4, and 5 of Chapter 8 of the Constitution. That in this House, people vote, members vote, according to their conscience, according to the issues before the House. Nobody can say, go and vote in the particular manner. Number three, Madam Speaker, every citizen in this country has a right to make a political choice. It is guaranteed in the Constitution. You can't then force them to make a choice in a particular manner. Number four, Madam Speaker, it is an act of universal suffrage under the Constitution itself, Article 81D, that when you go to elections, 
people present themselves to the electorate and are voted for. What we should be looking at, and I want to encourage my good friend Milson and those who are taking an activist approach to this issue, that this is not about activism, it's about realism. How do we achieve the gender parity without throwing the country into turmoil? What the Chief Justice has done can easily create a serious, serious crisis in the country. We need... Uh, what's your point of order, Senator Manga? Save my time. <laughs> Madam uh, Speaker, is a Senator Wetangula in order to call me an activist and that I'm not real? And we are talking about real issues. We are talking about human rights in the Constitution. And as you know, women's rights are human rights. Yes, Senator, Madam Senator. Speaker, I never called anybody an activist. I say don't take an activist approach. Those are two different things. Madam Speaker, in fact, my credentials and my party are very clear. My count of Bungoma, Madam Speaker, has the record of the highest elected women courtesy yours truly. Out of 45 wards, Madam Speaker, I have 13 elected women only too shy of the two-thirds majority because I gave them affirmative action and supported them. There is a young girl, Madam Speaker, who left university and went and defeated 16 men. She's an MCA because the party gave her a ticket and supported her. And we'll continue doing this. Change the psyche of your parties. Don't queue on lists to be nominated. Ask your parties to support you, to give you, especially in areas where parties are strong. When they give you a ticket, 50% of your election is done. And that's what we should be encouraging, Madam Speaker. Like Senator Yako has said, we can go home tomorrow. Many of us will come back. The same, same people will not have changed our gender. We will be the same. How do we achieve this? We need a national conversation. And if it requires a referendum, let's go to it. But I want to caution the president that it will be an extremely dangerous misadventure to try and dissolve parliament. Parliament has a fixed term. Nobody can interfere. The good old days, the bad old days, Madam Speaker, when you would be on the floor speaking the way I'm speaking, and there's a news flash that the president has dissolved parliament and your speech ends there and you go home. Those days are gone. Parliament determines its calendar. And the, our women folk, we support you. We want you to be leaders. I want a woman president if she can make it. But find a better route than going through this nihilist approach by Justice Thank you, Senator. Maraga. Senator Langat, no. Uh, Senator Halaka Abshiro Soka. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, let me start by saying that the constitutional rights of the women of Kenya cannot wait another minute. And for that reason and that reason alone, I support and I affirm the decision by the CJ to, to render and to give advice to the president that this house is unconstitutional. Madam Speaker, if there's any constitutional crisis or pandem pandemonium that's being uh, said will happen, it is not because of the CJ. It is because of the lack and failure of this House to do what they should have done 10 years ago. Madam Speaker, I know my friend Senator Wetangula has said he has been very philanthropic and charitable to women in his in his in, in his cause. We do not need charity of party leaders. We need constitutionalism that is going to ensure that we have and will exercise the equal rights to legislative representation, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, to be the CJ of this country is to be the laughing stock, to be abused, to be threatened, to be intimidated. But I applaud the CJ. He is a legal fundamentalist, and he should continue to be true to the laws of this country. And I, I really, really think this country is blessed to have CJ Maraga as at its 
at its helm. Madam Speaker, failure by parliament to enact legislation on the two thirds is tragic. It's been said here by both houses, especially by, by, by my friend um, Muturi, that it is not part of the mandate of parliament. If implementation of the constitution is not mandate of parliament, what is? It has also been said that there's no mechanism to implement this provision. What is schedule three, the fifth schedule four if there's no mechanism? It's also been said that it's too cons costly to implement the two thirds gender rule. Why is it that then we can do all the other things? We can implement devolution. We can go for, for referendum. We can have so many commissions upon commissions upon commissions. We can go back to a presidential election, but we cannot implement the two-thirds gender rule. Is it expensive or is it just tragic and blatant denial of rights of women in this country? <laughs> Madam Speaker, I've said it earlier on in Kamkunji and I'll say it again. It is no longer about the, 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 the laws, the legislation. It is about impunity. It's about refusing to uphold the rule of law for which we are responsible, we are legislators. Madam Speaker, I repeat, the constitutional rights of the women of this country must be respected, must be implemented, must not wait. And this is what, and I don't agree that the CJ did not follow the, the mechanisms provided. We've been told here, he's written letters to this house, he, there has been petitions. He has acted within his law, within the law, to implement as per his mandate under Article 261.7 of the Constitution. Another thing that has been said, Madam Speaker, is that there's one Article 102 about calendar of events, a calendar of, of Parliament. In this case, I'm not a lawyer, but I'd like an interpretation of what is more important. I'd like an interpretation. In cases of contradiction, what happens? Do we just jump to the one that suits us? Or do we then look at exactly which one? So it's not on for us to ra run to Article 102 that talks about calendar. We must exist before our calendar exists. And if under law we, we, are, we are illegit, so be it. We can't have a calendar where we're not even legitimately, legitimately constituted. Madam Speaker, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing how sometimes we look at ourselves and, and say, we who are, are, are nominated should have been the ones perhaps to be very scared because, um, you know, uh, party lists, I know we've been ridiculed here about, oh, your list will disappear. Stay with your lists and go back to the ballot. I support CJ and I celebrate him for his braveness, he is courageous, Last time when he nullified the presidential election, the people sitting on the other side, who are now you know, literally abusing him, were the ones that were really crying. She's done already, her minutes are over. So let's keep that point of order. Senator Inima Ketsut Musurube. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to uh, give my thoughts. And I want to start by saying, Honorable Speaker, that uh, I do not support the statement uh, by the uh, CJ. Uh, and I, I want to say, Honorable Speaker, that that statement was not well thought. That statement needed, uh, you know, uh, the arms of governments coming together, having a conversation for the sake of this nation in order for that pronouncement to be made. So I want to say, Honorable Speaker, that uh, when it comes to uh, the arms of government, no arm of government should work uh, uh, alone. And I want to say, Honorable Speaker, that uh, in as much as I really support that uh, we need a uh, two-third uh, gender rule, I want to say even on the floor of this house, and I will not blink, even if there's an interruption, that even when women are talking about, uh, you know, 50-50, when they're talking about the two-third gender rule, they never think about women with disabilities. 
And I want to say, Honorable Speaker, it was even on the floor of this house, I've said many times, Senator Mwaura has also said many times, that in 17 county assemblies, there was no representation of, uh, you know, persons with disabilities. Where was the CJ? Why did he, not, did he not comment on that? And I want to say, Honorable Speaker, even when we look at Article 54.2 of the Constitution, I want to say clearly that uh, that article has been flouted many times in many organizations everywhere where when it comes to nomination and elective po positions or appointees right from the top to the middle to the lower persons with disabilities are underrepresented where has been the cj so i want to say honorable speaker that the cj should be candid and he should not want to make a name this pronouncement that he's making where was he last year where was he last year but one why should it come at a point when he's, he's supposed to exit Honorable Speaker, there's a need to have a conversation. On the floor of this house, I remember we had an issue with the revenue sharing. It was heated, heated, but because of a team that was there and there was conversation at State House, the issue was resolved. The President was involved, Baba was involved, and the issue was resolved. This issue can be uh, resolved. So the CJ should stop politicking and should be candid to Kenyans. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And I want to say that uh, if there's any change that should be done, let a referendum come so that in the referendum, the thoughts that we have, the wrongs that we have, can be corrected. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Senator Sakaja Johnson. Ada. Madam Speaker, whatever Senator Musuruvi had for lunch, I would like it on my menu. <laughs> and I, I would ask her to please share. Madam Speaker, the first thing I want to say is really to urge those senators who say they support the dissolution of parliament to do the honorable thing because you must put your money where your mouth is and resign immediately. Because if you support the dissolution, then uh, you should actually resign. Because Madam Speaker, this is not about necessarily the content of, of, of the petition. We are discussing the process. We support the gender issues, Madam Speaker. But even if it was a bill on another matter that needed to have been done within a certain timeline, he would have made the same decision, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to start by saying that indeed there is something happening and there is something amiss. For this reason, there is a petition, there are two petitions before the court to be heard on the 7th of October on the determination on whether Justice Mativo's uh, order made on 29th March 2017 to the 11th Parliament refers to the 12th Parliament, Madam Speaker. That determination is to be made on the 7th of October. Where is this rush coming from? Where was the rush that uh, CJ Maraga has coming from, Madam Speaker, to plunge us into what is a potential constitutional crisis? Madam Speaker, when I say this, and I'd like just for the record for people to know, just like uh, my colleague Senator Omanga, we'd be ready for an election at any time. But if you look at the rules, Madam Speaker, right now there is no framework for an election. Parliament has a sole res legislative responsibility in this country. If parliament is dissolved and the next election can only be held in 2022, what happens in the intervening period? Who does budgets? Who is able to actually, Madam Speaker, play the role of representation, which is an Article 1 provision of the supremacy of the Constitution as well as the sovereignty of the people of Kenya, Madam Speaker? There is no other mechanism that is provided. Um, Madam Speaker, so, 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 so it, it points to um, mischief. It points to Samsonite a kind of politics where the CJ knows he's going and he's decided just like Samson in the Bible to hold both pillars of the temple or the you know where they were and go down with everybody Madam Speaker. Mr. Speaker now um, I can see the change uh, in on, on the chair. Um, Mr. Speaker um, there's a point that was made by Senator Ledama which is a very important point because number one if you look at the, the Constitution, the requirement of certain laws to be passed by a certain time, Mr. Speaker, points to the fifth schedule. The fifth schedule has a number of laws listed in the timelines. There is no two-third gender law on the fifth schedule stipulating for it to be passed within five years. It is not there. Senator Itangula, if you look, it, 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 it does not exist. Mr. Speaker, Parliament can argue that even the Political Parties Act of 2012 that was passed is a law that has actually been written to actually help women achieve this. And I support what Senator Yutangula said. I've been a party leader. As chairman of my party, uh, Mr. Speaker, where you are a member uh, at, at, at some point, 
because I knew that it takes a lot to get women elected, I made sure that there's a level playing field and for of the 16 women who were elected in 2013 in single member constituencies, eight of them, half, were from TNA. Some of these things can be solved within political parties. And that's a discussion we must get into. So I support what Senator Tangula said. Let us not be uh, poetic about it. Let us go to the root cause of this issue and address it. But I'd advise the state house controller, change the PO box number of state house so that it does not reach, reach there and it is a return to sender with immediate effect. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Asante sana mshimiwa Sakaja Senator wa Nairobi sasa nampa fursa uh, Senator uh, uh, Petronila Were. Uh, thank you. Thank you Mr. Speaker sir. I also would like to join my colleagues to add my voice to this issue in relation to the uh, to the dissolution or dissolving of parliament. An order that was, or an advisory that was given to the president by the Chief Justice Maraga. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my main interest and why I'm happy today is that the country is having a conversation on this issue of women, especially women in leadership. Mr. Speaker, my focus is mainly why how are we in this position in the first place? For a long time, Mr. Speaker, the country is not able to elect women into parliament. That is where the problem is, and that is where our focus should be. How should we deal with the cultural issues that prevent fellow women voting for women leaders? What cultural issues prevent men voting for women leaders? That's where our focus should be. Our second focus should be on political parties through which is the primary source, which is the primary source where leaders are nurtured, leaders are given to us. What should political parties do? What should political party leaders do? In areas, for example, where political parties are, are, uh, have strongholds, like for example, Jubilee in the Rift Valley and the uh, central uh, form, former pro provinces, ANC in Western, for example, and then ODM in, in Nyanza. The, the party leaders of those parties in those areas should be able to make sure that we have women who are strong given direct tickets. So, and many other ways or mechanisms of making sure women are elected and they come to this uh, parliament. Making sure that, or forcing parliamentarians to vote for women or for, we, for the women agenda is at all order because they have to answer to their cultural um, in uh, cultural uh, encumbrances back in their homes. They have to respond to the needs of their elders. So they, are, or they also have their hands tied on this issue. So we should look beyond what just uh, uh, Maraga has, uh, the Suja Maraga has raised and look at the key issue. Why are women not voted for? And look for solutions there. So even as we look forward to, to, to enacting laws to meet this two-third gender, we should focus on uh, amending the Elections Act, the Political Parties Act, and the IBC Act to reflect that fact to ensure that women come by right to this house. So that when they come to this house, they also have voting powers, not what we experience now with nominated members. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I support the motion. Asante sana kwa kujeleza kuzuri kabisa. Sasa hivi anachukua fursa hii kumpatia mwashimua mili Santomanga. Speaker, I'd uh, first want to applaud the 14th Chief Justice of Kenya, Mr. David Kenani Maraga, for his uh, advisory role and uh, the ruling, actually, which uh, I want him to advise the president, and actually it is in order. Mr. Speaker, lawyers in here, colleagues are talking a lot of jargon. And the Constitution is actually very clear. The colleagues in here want to behave like uh, these commercial preachers we have in the streets who actually read the Bible verses in isolation so that it fits their situation. It fits the situation where they want money from uh, the followers, so they read some specific chapters. 
the way when you give, you get, I don't know, the, the lady in the, in the Bible who gave one cent and got, I don't know how much, that's how the lawyers in here are behaving. Mr. Speaker, the Constitution is very clear. Uh, Article 27, under the... You hold my turn. Nina Mwishimiwa Okongo Mugeni, hoja nidhamu ni ipi? Mr. Speaker, you have heard uh, Senator Manga, a uh, senator that I respect a lot, refer not once, not twice, three times, equating lawyers in the house to commercial preachers <laughs> in the streets of, 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 of Nairobi. Is that language that is befitting debate in this house? And. Uh, the, the lawyers in the house, as we speak now, is me and the Senator Cherage. Is she in order, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker, to use such a derogatory language against us, especially some of us who have toiled in this legal profession to the level of becoming senior counsel? I'm the only senior counsel from our region. Is she in order, Mr. Speaker? Uh. Uh, Mwishmiwa Senator Manga kabla ya kuzungumza unakumbushwa kwamba utumie lugha ambayo ni ya heshima ambayo inawapatia hadhi mawakili ambao ni wakutajika kama Senator Mogeni na wengine ambao wamewakilisha bunge hili katika kesi eh, nyingi na kabla sija ujarudilia kwenye mjadala Mwishmiwa eh, Cherarkei Senator uliweza kukiuka maadili kwa kuvuka eh, sakafu bila ya kwenda pale kwenye eh, Poleni, tafadhali kama unaweza kufanya vile ili tuweze kuheshimu nyumba. Mheshimiwa Mangu unaweza kuendelea. Thank you Mr. Speaker. Eh, I'm most obliged. Eh, Mr. Speaker, I've had colleagues eh, use a lot of uh, skepticism talking about eh, the 2010 constitution was hurriedly passed. And uh, Mr. Speaker, you know the journey of the new constitution started way long ago from 1997 we 2000. In 2005, we actually went to a referendum, which we didn't pass. Then we came in 20, 2009, where we passed this uh, new constitution. And uh, it was overwhelm, overwhelmingly voted for. It was 6 million against 2 million. So for colleagues to claim that uh, the constitution was hurriedly passed, it's not, uh, it's not true. Because, Mr. Speaker, in our county assemblies, uh, they're, 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 the truth agenda is complied to. Why is it that in the National Assembly, in Parliament, is the National Parliament is where we have a problem, Mr. Speaker? It is because most colleagues here, who when most of our time we come with this uh, bill, the truth agenda bill, most of the colleagues are egocentric, selfish, that uh, Mr. Speaker, they don't want to, to hear anything to do with gender because they've taken gender to be a woman affair. What they don't know, Mr. Speaker, is that the ball might be on their court the other, uh, uh, next time because uh, it will come a time where maybe women will be elected into parliament and uh, the boy child, the male gender, would be actually pleading to be included in the, in the, in the numbers in parliament. There is also an argument that uh, the, about the calendar, uh, Article 1 or 2, about the election of the president. What I wanted to ask them is that we went for a repeat election where our president was elected again in November 26th, I think. And uh, members of parliament, we were elected in uh, August, around August 5th. So there is a difference of three months. Does it mean when our term ends, because uh, they want to put it like uh, it's cast on stone, five years, does it mean when our term ends, the president will still uh, continue with his term for three months so that he finishes his, uh, his uh, five-year term? So that one, uh, Mr. Speaker, does not uh, surpass, does not surface. So, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, I want to urge uh, colleagues, because uh, Madam Senator Faria has got a bill on uh, this two-third gender bill. We need to just fast track it, and uh, as members of uh, my colleagues in the Senate, urge them to support uh, Senator 
Fariri, Faria and the Senator Mutula's bill so that we are compliant. Otherwise, if we cannot, uh, Mr. Speaker, actually support dissolution of this house so that we go back to the drawing board and maybe the new members who will be elected into this house would be thinking right and straight to come and uh, pass uh, this uh, legislation to have uh, women included uh, in decision making. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Sana Senator Mteule, Senator Milisa Ndomanga. Ni vizuri pia niseme kwamba mimi na wewe tulichora vizuri kuwa katika hili nyumba. Sasa hivi nataka kumkaribisha ama kumpa fursa Senator Cherarke aweze kuchangia. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, wish you and congratulate you. Uh, I want from the onset to say the advisory that was transmitted or that has been given to the President under Article 261, 6, uh, 5, 6, 7, and 8 uh, is a threat to democracy and the social fabric of this country. Uh, in Kenya, and I, want, I, I thought uh, Chief Justice Maraga, having worked closely when I was the chair of JLAC, would have borrowed one or two things. Because the law does not exist in vacuum, you have heard even in sub, at sub part B of uh, 261.5b, that order should have been transmitted to the Parliament of the Republic of Kenya. That one was never done. And therefore, even as you declare that this Parliament is unconstitutional, we need also to ask ourselves whether there has been an audit to know whether judiciary meets the threshold of uh, third gender rule, the, the presidency or the cabinet, and the parliament and other organizations that work. I thought the achievement and the aim, Mr. Speaker, sir, was to have a progressive achievement on this issue of gender. And as, as we, we sat, uh, when I used to chair JLAC, and tried to deliberate on this issue. Uh, uh, on the bill that was brought before us. But we realize there are so many factors that I would wish our women, people living with disability, I am a young person, that we should realize that you need to create a level playing ground for a fair competition in politics. That is why for the youth and the people living with disability, also they need a pronouncement from the Supreme Court in terms of their representation. That affirmative aspect has been tried to be brought to life under Article 53. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, I think where we sit, the, the, the CJ misadvised himself on this issue of uh, declaring the parliament unconstitutional. Number two, Mr. Speaker, when you look at Article 101, the constitution envisaged that every second Tuesday of every fifth year in August, we should have a general election. It did not envisage a situation where there would be a dissolution of parliament there would be a position where a president will be given an advice to dissolve parliament so that people can go back to the vote. Mr. Speaker, some of us are not worried whether elections we call today, a snap election today or tomorrow. We are sure of coming back. But what, where does it leave the country? We have issues of COVID. The, 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 the economy is not doing very well. There are over 16 million Kenyans without formal, or they, they are in formal sector. Others do not are, are underemployed in this country. And majority of them are People living with disability and the young people and mostly are women, Madam Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sorry. Secondly, and, and one, I want to advise the women of this country. There are no free things, just like there are no free lunches. There are no freebies where you will sit and say, now today, we, you, know, you know that this democracy, Mr. Speaker, we should not create a very bad culture where we tell somebody, no, there is a seat. That is discrimination contrary to Article 27 of the Constitution of Kenya. If women today will know that there is a free seat somewhere, they will not compete. There are women like Phoebe Asio. There are women like uh, Chalagat Mutai, who comes from my county. The former the, the deputy speaker, current deputy speaker. There are many women who have fought hard with men. I have an MCA from Kilibwani Ward by the name Cynthia Muga. She flawed over 20 men to win an MCA. I didn't hear. So my, my, my issue is women of this country, in the issue of gender, they must know there are no freebies. There are no free lunches. You don't need to work, but I want to advise that, that as we go back, we, we must agree. And then finally, or secondly and finally, I would have expected the Chief Justice who is retiring. On several occasions, he came before the committee of jailers. We stood with him when the executive were doing budgetary cuts. He has forgotten. 
The other day when the executive wanted him to retire, the other day, Mr. Speaker, sir, we are the ones who defended him and say he must stay up to December because we didn't want to create a, a, a constitutional crisis within the judiciary. Why is the CJ not alive to all these issues, uh, Mr. Sp Mr. Speaker? Finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to say this. There is BBI coming. Is there a conspiracy to use this as a scarecrow against members of parliament, Mr. Speaker? And therefore, I think it is misadvised. I want to say we are ready for election anytime, but I can assure you if election is done today, ma ma Mr. Speaker, I can assure there will be more men coming to parliament than even women. I thank you. Asante sana mwishimiwa Senator Charargeida wewe unabachachari kabisa. Sasa hivi nampatia Senator Okongo Omogeni, Senator Wanyamira. Yambaya ni wakili mkuu ambaye mepatiwe hiyo hadhi na heshima na mwishimiwa Rais. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir. I first want to state categorically that I, I am not an enemy of women of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, I am a son of a mother. I have been married for the last 23 years. I have a daughter who is aspiring to be a lawyer like me. She is doing her final year. So as a matter of fact, I have no hatred against the women of this country. But Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I believe that the best that we can do to our women... Samahani mwashimiwa, Senator. Leo ni maitua Madam Speaker mara nyingi sana. Nafiki kwa sabi na zunuzia mambo ya jensia. Yes. Mr. Speaker, my wish for all the women of this country is that we should create an environment for our women to pursue their goals to their highest level that they, they want. And I, I was impressed, Mr. Speaker, to see the other day that uh, the former Deputy Chief Justice of this country, Madam Nancy Baraza, has offered to run for presidency. And in line with Article 38, the best way to test your popularity among your people is to vie for elective posts. That's the best way to test your popularity, um, popularity among uh, voters. Mr. Speaker, this constitution I have tremendous respect with the Committee of Experts that drafted this constitution, but it has got a number of challenges. Mr. Speaker, if you go to Article 81 uh, that talks about gender, uh, Article 81B, it only makes a general statement. 81B says that not more than two-thirds of members of elective public bodies shall be of the same gender. But if you go to the fifth schedule, Mr. Speaker, there is no timeline given for enactment of any law under that particular uh, article of our constitution. The only article that has got uh, time is Article 100, where Parliament was given a period of five years. But it says that Parliament shall enact legislation to promote. What is to promote? I mean, if you say that uh, in an election, political parties will give both uh, gender, a chance to vote for nomination. That is promoting. If you state that women will not be harassed in campaigns, they'll get an environment to, campaign, to, to do their campaigns freely. That is promoting. And if you go to Article 27, the obligation, I don't know that the Chief Justice has read this article. In Article 27, the obligation is placed on the state, not on parliament. Article 27, uh, 27 subarticle 8 says, in addition to measures contemplated in clause 6, the state shall take legislative and other measures. So the obligation is not on us as parliamentarians. The obligation is on the state. Therefore, this celebrated son of Nyamira, Chief Justice Maraga, is human. He can err like anybody else. It's only God who cannot make a mistake. I think on this one, Mr. Speaker, the Chief Justice has committed an error. And this opinion or advice that he has transmitted to the President can be challenged. And I'm happy that uh, we have made a decision as Parliament to proceed to the High Court to challenge the advice 
that the CG has given to the president. 